In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this incredibly decadent double dark chocolate and strawberry sourdough loaf. To start, add 100 grams of active sourdough starter and 425 grams of water that's been warmed to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit to a mixing bowl. Stir these together to roughly combine. Then add 9 grams of salt, 100 grams of cane sugar, and 1 teaspoon or about 4 to 5 grams of vanilla bean paste or extract. Then add 50 grams of Dutch processed black cocoa powder. I like to use this King Arthur brand. I'll have it linked in the description box below. Once you've added the cocoa powder, mix to combine all of the ingredients. Once you have all of the other ingredients combined, add 500 grams of bread flour and mix until all of the flour is fully hydrated. I find it easiest to mix the dough together with a Danish dough whisk. Don't forget to scrape the sides of your bowl with a silicone spatula. Once all of your flour is fully mixed and hydrated, cover your bowl with a damp towel and let it rest on the counter for one hour. After resting the dough, we're going to start a series of four rounds of stretch and folds, each spaced 30 minutes apart. To stretch and fold the dough, reach your hands in on one side, pull the dough up and over itself, then spin the bowl 90 degrees and repeat on all four sides. After stretching and folding, cover your dough again with a damp towel and let it rest for 30 minutes. During the second and third round of stretch and folds, we're going to add a total of 125 grams of dark chocolate chips and about 25 grams of freeze dried strawberries. Half in the second round of stretch and folds and the other half in the third round of stretch and folds. To add these, sprinkle a little bit of each onto your dough, then stretch and fold the dough up and over the inclusions. Turn the bowl like you normally would, sprinkle on a bit more, and stretch and fold again. You can add whatever kind of chocolate you prefer. I added 60% dark chocolate chips, but you could add milk chocolate, you could cut up a chocolate bar and add those pieces, whatever you prefer. With the freeze dried strawberries, make sure not to crush them up into very small pieces before adding them. As we stretch and fold and manipulate the dough, the strawberries will be broken up into smaller pieces. If you add them into the dough too small in the beginning, they'll end up just disappearing into the dough in the end. Then cover and rest the dough again for 30 minutes. During the third round of stretch and folds, you're going to add the other half of your chocolate and freeze dried strawberries. Add them the exact same way that you did during the second round of stretch and folds. Something important to note is that you have to use freeze dried strawberries for this recipe. If you use fresh strawberries, the natural water in the strawberries will turn your dough into a soupy mess. Complete the fourth and final round of stretch and folds just like you did with the first round. This will help get the chocolate and freeze dried strawberries more evenly distributed throughout the dough. After the fourth round of stretch and folds, rest your dough on the counter for at least two hours. You want to look for signs of good fermentation such as bubbles on the surface of the dough, a nice smooth shiny dough, and a nice dome shape to the top of the dough. When you see all of this, your dough is ready to start shaping. Pick your bowl up and flip it over and allow the dough to naturally release from the bowl onto the counter. Using your bench scraper, gently pull the sides of your dough out so that you have the dough roughly into the shape of a larger rectangle or circle. Then pull each of the sides of the dough in towards the center. Then flip the dough over and loosely form into the shape of a ball. Leave the dough on the counter, but cover it with your damp towel and let it rest for 30 minutes. After bench resting, using your bench scraper, pick up your dough and flip it over so that the smooth side is down on the counter. Then take the top of your dough and fold it down to the center. Then fold each of the sides into the center with a slight overlap. Fold the bottom up all the way to the top and flip the dough over. Then gently use your hands to form the dough into a ball and tighten the surface of the dough. Be careful here because if you pull it too tight, you'll tear the dough with the chocolate chips. Rather than sprinkling my banneton with rice flour, I like to sprinkle more of the Dutch cocoa powder onto the surface of my dough. This allows my dough to keep its nice rich brown color. 
Pick your dough up and place it smooth side down into a banneton. Let it rest for five minutes. Look at how rich this loaf is compared to the milk chocolate sourdough I'll be showing you in my next video. After resting for five minutes, gently pull the edges of your dough in towards the center to help seal the bottom of the dough and create a little bit more surface tension. Then sprinkle the bottom of the loaf with more cocoa powder. Then cover your banneton with a reusable bowl cover or place it into a plastic bag. Refrigerate the dough overnight or for about 6 to 18 hours. The next morning, preheat your oven with a Dutch oven inside to 450 degrees for about one hour. When your oven and Dutch oven are done preheating, take your dough out of the fridge. You can see here that it rose pretty significantly in the fridge overnight. Flip your dough out of its banneton onto a piece of parchment paper. Score any decorative scoring and your deep expansion scores into the dough. It can be a little bit more difficult to score this dough as your blade can sometimes get hung up on some chocolate chips. For this reason, I chose just to do the expansion scores on this loaf. Take your Dutch oven out of the oven and place your loaf inside on its piece of parchment paper. I throw a couple of ice cubes into the Dutch oven just before closing the lid. You can also spray your loaf with water. This creates a nice steamy environment and allows the bread to rise more before the crust has formed. Place your Dutch oven into the oven and bake at 450 degrees with the lid on for 30 minutes. Then take the lid off and turn your oven down to 400 degrees and continue baking for about 15 to 20 more minutes. Take your dough out of the oven and allow it to cool on a wire rack. To check if it's cooked all the way through, knock on the bottom of the loaf and it should sound hollow. Once the loaf is cool, you can cut it open and look at the delicious crumb. This loaf has a great balance of deep, rich, dark chocolate flavor, little punches of strawberry, and just the right amount of sweetness. It's absolutely delicious with butter, strawberry jam, or peanut butter. It would make incredible peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or even a delicious chocolate French toast. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's video on milk chocolate sourdough.